Hello Fude friends! Today's video is part two of the Chiku Hodo uh, Silver Fox FO series. I apologize for the massive delay in filming and getting this up. The good news is I have had a long time to use these brushes and can share my final review of the series. There will be a softness survey link below. If you missed part one, do check it out. That one is about the FO1 and FO2 and Silver Fox hair performance in general. I will not talk about these two brushes in this video other than to say that I love them as much as I did in the first video, have used them extensively, and have nothing to report in terms of shedding or wear and tear. However, I do want to add something that I wish I had remembered to include in the first video. That is the introduction of Silver Fox hair to the Fude market. While I think it's important for companies to innovate and introduce new products, I think it is also important for us as consumers to be mindful of what we purchase. In this case, fox brushes. From an ethical standpoint, is fox really different from squirrel or goat? Where do we draw the line? Only you can answer that question for yourself. But what I can say is that most fox fur for the fur industry is farmed, as far as I'm aware. I can't say how the fur for these brushes is harvested, and we won't know unless the manufacturers disclose this information. But from the little I do know, I would encourage you not to blindly believe the cruelty-free status Japanese fude brushes often get, or the stories of squirrels being brushed for their hairs, or of Japan having strict animal welfare laws. Let's just go there and note that Japan kills whales commercially and withdrew from the International Whaling Committee, a global organization committed to the conservation of whales after commercial hunting drove species to near extinction. Even more devastating is the overfishing of bluefin tuna, an endangered species that faces a real and high risk of extinction. Bluefin tuna declines are single-handedly due to demand from fish markets and sushi restaurants, and over 80% of the global bluefin tuna catch is consumed in Japan. I find these practices to be incredibly disappointing for a developed country like Japan, and do not believe Japan has strong animal welfare laws at all. As a matter of fact, I believe Japan's animal welfare laws are weak compared to international standards, but you don't need to believe me as that is something you can research and see for yourself. While I can accept the use of squirrel and goat products, I draw the line at creating demand for a product of an animal that is critically endangered and faces a high risk of becoming extinct in our lifetime. I beg you to please be a part of the solution and say no to bluefin tuna. All of this is to say that I find the label cruelty-free to be dishonest, misleading at best, when applied to food aid brushes. While I enjoy and choose to purchase natural hair brushes, I do so with the understanding that they are in all likelihood not cruelty-free. Ultimately, it is up to each of us to decide what we are and what we are not willing to tolerate for use in our makeup application and everyday consumables and I would encourage you to have that conversation with yourself. Having said all of that, which I owe to myself and all of you, let's finish up this review. After enjoying the FO1 powder brush and FO2 foundation brush, I purchased the remaining brushes in the series. So let's start with the FO3 cheek brush. The FO3 cheek brush retailed for 10,000 Japanese yen. It is made of, out of 100% silver fox, as are all the brushes in this series. The shape of this one is the same shape as the FO1 powder brush, but in a reduced size. I will put them next to each other for size comparisons. The FO3 cheek brush has an oval ferrule and 40 millimeter bristle length. I think this is a standard size for a cheek brush, both for the ferrule size and the hair length. And you'll see that when I compare it next to the Z8. It is of medium density and the bristles really flare out from the ferrule and blossom outwards. So despite it having this oval shape, um, it because it blossoms out so much, it almost has a rounded and feels like a pom-pom shape. Softness, I will mention it now, but it applies to all of the brushes in the series. It's very soft and I think adequate for even sensitive skin types. On the softness survey, I would rate these a three or four, closer to a four. 
So here are some size comparisons. Here is the Chikuhodo Z8. The Z8 ferrule is actually a little bit wider, but because the Silver Fox blooms out more, the blush head on the the brush head on the FO3 is wider. These are of similar medium density, and the bristle length on the Z8 is also 40 millimeters. I think you will enjoy the FO3 more if you like to buff in products as you apply them, as it's easier to work with the FO brush in a more circular motion over the Z8, which I prefer to use more linearly. Also, depending on the products you're planning to use, you may prefer brushes from the FO series. For example, gel to powder or baked formulas, I find work better with the FO brush because it picks up harder products easier. But keep in mind that these pick up product less well than pure goat brushes from my experiences. So let's go through these brushes quickly, mostly for size comparison purposes. Here I have the Z4. The Z4 is much smaller and flatter. And then I have the Hakuhodo S110. This is an all goat brush. I have had it in a brush guard, so it would flare out, blossom a little bit more, but not as much as the FO brush. And so the S110, um, I find works fine for patting and linearly, but when you try to use it in a circular motion, you will face resistance. It's just not very smooth or pleasant to use circularly because it wants to flop to either side and just, I think, easier on the brush to use linearly, but I don't have that problem with the FO3 in that I can pat linear, but also buff. And I think that's because the brush flares out more and has a slightly more rounded shape that allows you to use it more in circular buffing motions. I find this very versatile and one of the reasons I would recommend this brush. Um, and that's true of this one and also the next one I'll show you which is the F04. And then the last size comparison is the Sonia G Soft Cheek. I pulled this one out because it reminds me of it in terms of performance and that you can get the soft and gentle buffing application. But the FO3 is wider and has a larger bristle surface area. Um, you can use it, if you use the FO3 on its side, so like this, you'll get a similar surface area to the soft cheek. My favorite uses for this FO3 brush have been blush, bronzer, and targeted setting powder. Moving on to the next brush, this is the FO4, also retailed for 10,000 Japanese yen. The shape of this one, it's um, the same oval ferrule and basically the same ferrule shape as the FO3. Here they are for size comparison purposes. You can see the 4 is a little smaller in bristle length than the 3. So while they have basically the same ferrule, the um, FO4 has an angled brush head and it's also of medium density and I think a standard size for a cheek brush and the bristle length are 35 millimeters at the longest end and 20 at the shortest end. Time has proved to me that this is my most used brush. Best uses are blush, bronzer, contour, you can also set with it, especially under the eyes. It's really easy to get in with the shorter end and then kind of sweep outward. But I do use this one mostly for cheek products, so blush, amazing for bronzer. And again, the reason I like this one so much is because I can diffuse and blend in circular motions, as I mentioned earlier. This is despite it having an oval ferrule, having an angled shape, I'm still able to use it in the more traditional way for angled brushes, which is a more sweeping motion where you start from the shorter end and then sweep outward to let the longer bristles diffuse and blend the product as you sweep outward. Um, but this buffing technique of doing it in a more circular motion is new for me with an angled brush and I've just found that very helpful and 
different to how I usually use angled brushes. Prior to this, I'd use them only in sweeping motions from the shortest side outward, and I really enjoyed being able to deposit, sweep, and buff all at once with one brush. So here it is next to the Z8 and the Z4. I think it's closest to size in the C8. Z8 has 40 millimeter bristle lengths and they're both of medium density. The next one I would like to put it next to is the Sonia G Face Pro. These are not good size comparisons because the Sonia G is a powder brush, but they do have similar density and I just wanted to show you how they compare in size and angle shape. I think they're similar shape. The Sonia G is much wider and larger. And then the next one I have to compare it to is actually closer in size. This is the Surratt Sculpting Brush and this is a combination of squirrel and goat feels closer to squirrel. The ferrule size is about the same, but it's less wide. And that's also reflected in the bristles. So you can see the Surratt one is skinnier at the ferrule and at the bristles. Um, the bristles bloom out less. The bristles are also shorter. And the Surratt one has a greater angle at the top and comes to a sharper point. Last comparison I have is the Hakuhodo J511. This one is much smaller. It's less dense than the F04 and this one works mostly for highlight. I think the F04 is too large for highlighting but that's where the next brush would come in. The F05. So much smaller brush. More for detail work. On the Hakuhodo one. Next we have the F05 eyeshadow brush and this one retailed for 3,000 Japanese yen so I was happy to see a major price drop making this one a good option for anyone who just wants to get a feel for the Silver Fox and experience the handles in the series without making a huge commitment on one of the face brushes. The shape of this one is a pinched oval at the ferrule. It has an oval brush head and I find this to be quite large for an eyeshadow brush. It has a medium density and this one blooms less and I find it to be more flat. I had no issues with this one in terms of softness against the delicate eye area. It feels very soft and silky. It's stiffer than squirrel but less stiff than sable bristles while maintaining its softness. I had no pokiness at all, even when I was intentionally trying to do poking motions, which I would never do, but I would intentionally um, press it down against my eyes and it really didn't create any sensitivity. So that was great. I think this is notable for this bristle type because sometimes goat or even squirrel and goat combinations or squirrel and fitch combinations or any other combinations can be pokey around the eye area. I don't think you will have that problem at all with these brushes. Best uses for this one are eyeshadow, especially if you have larger eye shapes um, or if you prefer larger eye brushes. I know people love this one and have ranked it as one of their favorites. But I, however, do not have large eyes and I can only use it for single eyeshadow sweeping motions um, or setting the eye, which I haven't been doing a lot lately. So for me, it's not the most versatile eye brush just simply because of its size. If it was 25% smaller, I think I would like it a lot more. But the other way you can use it is as a highlighter brush. It's doable. I will note that not everyone may like it for this because of its smaller size and medium density it makes it more directional and it will give you a stronger um, highlight effect but I think you would really like that if you're intentionally going for a vivid highlighter application or if you're working with a hard press formula a gel formula that requires more density to pick up and then the added bonus and 
one of the ways I've enjoyed it the most is actually for under the eye. So um, you can set under the eye, you can sweep fall out under the eye. I like to do it in a patting motion because it is large enough. It covers a lot of surface area under the eye and then you can sweep away. And it's great for this because it's so soft never pokey and more resilient fox hairs make it better for this purpose than an all squirrel brush. So I have find that used to be a pleasant surprise. And here it is next to some comparisons. So I have the Sonia G Mini Chi, which is intended to be a detail brush, a highlighting brush. This would be a great addition to the Sonia G mini cheek if you wanted something smaller so the sonia g has a slightly different shape in that it blooms out more and is more dome shaped it also has a larger ferrule but not by much the biggest difference i think is in the bristle size it's also less densely packed and it splays out more so it's overall a larger and more airy brush for diffusing highlighter the fo5 will give a stronger highlighter application which may be good if that's your go-to or if you're working in a specific area and want more precise and stronger highlighter. And then comparing it to eyeshadow brushes, I have here the Surratt Eyeshadow Large. This one is a squirrel brush, I believe Canadian squirrel. And it's really interesting. I think they have the exact same brush head size and ferrule size. Maybe the ferrule's a little bit bigger on the Surratt, but it's not very noticeable. So I think this has been the best comparison I have found to it. And you can see how much the FO bristles bloom out, whereas the Surratt squirrel one is more flat in nature. But very similar size, shape. My Surratt one comes more to an almond shape point and is overall less domed and rounded. And then the last size comparison is another Chikuhodo brush. This is the Chikuhodo Z5, also a scroll brush. And this one has a slightly wider ferrule and shorter bristles. So different shape, but as you can see, I think the Z5 is always regarded as a larger eyeshadow brush, and you can see how the F05 is even bigger. All right, so these were the brushes that were initially released as the F05 series and I found this eyeshadow brush to be too large for me so I was very glad when they released an additional two eye brushes the F06 and the F07. The F06 is um, that one retailed for 2800 Japanese yen. The shape is a small eyeshadow brush of medium density with an oval ferrule. It's actually very similar in shape to the F05, but a fraction of the size. So it has shorter bristles, um, it's, the ferrule is less wide, and all of this means that the bristles bloom out even less. They're much more directional and less flexible. The tip on this one I find to be more precise as in it's bundled so the hairs start to taper out near the top whereas this one the it's more of a dome shape so you actually can get to a point on the F06. And again, I had no sensitivities when using the F06, even along the lash line. And I was trying to poke around and see if I felt any pokiness with the bristles, and I did not. So again, very pleased with that, and I think suitable for even delicate eye areas. Best uses for this one are as a shader brush, inner corner, because it is very, very small, and you can really get in there, and it's not going to... Um, hurt your eyes. You can also use the point to line the upper and lower lash lines and while I think it applies a little bit better than an all squirrel brush and near identical to a goat with the softness of squirrel which is a huge positive but it's I didn't find it to be great for picking up um, 
like more glittery or special shades for instance the Pat McGrath special shades I would still prefer a goat brush over this one I find the bristles to be almost a little too silky to pick up the heavier formulas um, so let's get into comparisons. The closest one I have is this Chiku Hodo Times Beauty Lish Portable Maki Sakura Brush. Wow, these have some really long names. Um, I do have some notes to remind me of what these are because I could not remember them. But if you look at these closely, they appear to be nearly identical in terms of feral and bristle size. The Sakura Beautylish one is a combination of Squirrel and Fitch with the same shape that comes to a point. Now the downside to the Sakura one is there are times where I have found it scratchy and that's what I was mentioning earlier that sometimes even these squirrel combination brushes can be pokey around the eye. So I much prefer the F06 brush because regardless of the angle, I have not found any sensitivities while using this brush. The FO brush just glides along the lid. The next comparison I have is the Sonia G Builder Pro, which is one of my favorite brushes. This brush is a bit larger and more flexible. It's also made out of Sai Coho Goat, and it has this almond taper shape. The FO6 is similar in shape to it, just a little smaller. And then the last brush that was added to this series is the F07. This one also retailed for 2,800 Japanese yen. The shape on this one is actually different. Pleasant surprise. I find Chikuhoto doesn't make very many round, feral eye brushes. Um, so I had high expectations for this one. This one is a medium-sized pencil eye brush with a rounded feral. And it has medium to high density, meaning that if I push the bristles, there's really no gaps in the ferrules. I would actually say it's high density. And I'll show it next to the F06 so you can get an idea of the size. Similar in size, same width of the ferrule at the base, but the um, F07 is obviously a flat pinched ferrule. The uses I have found for this one. Um, well, I'll start off by saying that I had high expectations for this brush and maybe I shouldn't have. And this brush has turned out to be the one I reach for the least. And I think that's because I could do anything I wanted to do with this brush with the F06. So I don't like using it on the point because I find the point to be too large for my smaller eyes, whereas the point on the F06 is much smaller and more precise. For instance, lining the lash lines, this one's ideal for me. The F07 gives a thicker line that is just not suitable for my eyes. And then same goes with inner corner work. I could do the same job with the F06 than with the 7, but I will note that someone with uh, larger eyes may prefer this one. It really comes down to your brush size preferences and something for you to think about if you're trying to decide between the 6 or the 7. They're both good brushes. I just found this one to be a little too big for me. And so the best uses have been deepening the outer V and crease. But again, I found that I prefer other brushes, for instance, less dense and more airy brushes. For example, the Suku S, which I'll show you in a minute, has basically the same shape, but much more flexibility. And my feedback on this brush would be that I wish they had made the bristles a little bit longer to make it a more traditional blending brush, which this set does lack. Or even if you kept the size of this brush head and bristle length, I wonder if making it a little less dense would have made it more of like a mini blender, like the Sonia G Mini Booster. Overall, I find it just a little too big to use when you want a stiff brush and a little too stiff to use when you want more of a blending brush, if that makes sense. But if you have this brush and it's been working for you, 
please let me know how you have been using it. Maybe I just haven't found the right use for it. So here are the comparisons. Here is the Suku S. Before the FO bloomed after washing, this one looked to be the perfect size comparison or dupe to the now discontinued original Suku S. It's highly sought after and unfortunately they don't make it anymore. You can see how close the size is, but once it bloomed, the FO one did widen more both at the base and near the top. Um, I think this gives you a good idea what the Suku S would look like, but I still prefer the Suku because the head moves with more ease as a smudger and a pencil brush. And it's also um, a little smaller. So the FO is just a little too dense for my liking. Next size comparison I have is the Chikuhodo Z10. Similar size, but again, it's a little smaller and this one comes more to a point, whereas the FO7 is more domed at the top. And because of that, I also prefer the Z10 as a pencil brush. And then lastly, I have the Sonya G Pencil 2. This one is made out of goat. Similar size. I think these are actually quite close and the Sonya G is more dense and I think it works better when you're trying to pick up harder to pick up formulas, heavier formulas um, and both of these I think are nice for inner corner highlight if you prefer slightly bigger brushes or have larger eyes. Um, so I think that wraps up each of the brushes. Let's get into the overall conclusion. I've had these brushes for months and I can say with confidence that they exceeded my expectations and are of the same quality we can expect from Chiku Hodo. My favorite from the series turned out to be this angled brush, but really all of the face brushes I really gravitated towards and particularly because of how they bloom and how you can use them in more circular buffing motions. So you have this versatility of application techniques, but also product formulas that you can use them with. I think the series is of equal quality to the Z series, just made with different materials. In general, if you're trying to decide between the FO and C series, I would recommend the FO if you prefer buffing techniques, more rounded or domed shape brushes versus the Z series has more pinched and flat brushes. Um, I would prefer, I would recommend the FO if you prefer working over tacky finishes and don't want to have to be as delicate with the brushes. And then on the flip side, I would prefer the Z series if you like the black handle aesthetic in that series or know that you only want to work with powder products and already know you enjoy the squirrel brushes. It's really a matter of personal preferences and you certainly do not need both series and you also can't go wrong. These are all beautifully crafted brushes. As always, I would like to thank you for watching and from now on, I will plead you to please say no to Bluefin Tuna. Thank you.